it's that time of year again. January, it's a little bit late, sorry, but it is time to talk about what is in my camera bag for this year. Now, a lot has changed since last year. Last year's video was not really a what's in my camera bag video. I didn't really use a lot of that stuff in my bag every day. The bag sort of stayed on the bottom of my shelf and I only used it when I had a specific shoot. So now that I have the office down at work uh, and I'm coming back in working from here sometimes as well, I need to actually have a set of kit that I carry with me at all times in order to be able to make these videos, but also in order to be able to take photographs and do client work wherever I could be based. So I've always got like a skeleton kit with me. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What's going on everybody? Luke Michael James here and welcome back to another video. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, if you are new here, uh, I make content around videography, photography, but also a lot of other cool things such as gaming, fitness, cycling and music. So if that sounds like something you will enjoy watching on YouTube, then consider subscribing. So over the last couple of days, I've been streamlining what I think should be in my camera bag for this year, because I am gonna be traveling to and from the office, and I don't really know what days I'm gonna be working where. So as opposed to last year, where I just had my camera bag empty and put stuff in when I needed it, I kinda need to have like a skeleton setup. So without further ado, let's get into what is in my bag, starting with the bag itself. This is the Low Pro 450. Uh, Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW2. Same bag as last year, bought it because Peter McKinnon had one. He's got his own bag now, but I can't afford it. This stayed anyway, it's still in relatively good nick. Uh, and it just, you know, it's a, it's a hefty bag that can fit plenty of stuff in. That's why I've got it. Next. Another thing that hasn't changed is the camera that I'm using, or the cameras. The Sony A7 III, this one, and the one that we're shooting on currently. Obviously, I would like to have uh, like an A7R4 for photos for that high res, but also an A7S3 for video. That's seven grand, uh, and I can't really justify that to be fair. Um, so the A7Threes, for now, brilliant middle ground. They always have been. The cameras this year are already stepping things up. Last year, they stepped things up, but the A7Three is still a great value camera for what it does. I do get a little bit frustrated sometimes when I want to include slow-mo footage, but it means I have to either upscale the 1080 or downscale the 4K and then just use a 1080p video. Uh, I just like to have the, the very best quality that I can possibly get. So I like to upload these videos in 4K, which is what this one is, because I just think it looks, well, if you've got it at your disposal, why not use the very best, do you know what I mean? So. That's frustrating, but that's why I want the A7S III. For now though, you know, I can't lose sleep over it. Great cameras. One more thing that has remained the same is this beautiful lens, the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master. This lens is fantastic. I don't use it for everything anymore though. Um, it's very good at what it does. Wide angle, it's great for astrophotography. The sharpness is fantastic but it's a fixed 24 mil, it's quite wide. So I only really use it for set wide shots with a shallow depth of field, uh, for interviews or for YouTube videos uh, in low light. Weird though actually, because I should really be using this for that, um, but I aren't, so I'm not sure, not sure why I'm doing that. Normally do. Anyway, it stays in the camera bag, that will be coming with me uh, to the office and back. Now last year I had a whole load of lenses that I used for different things, but now I've only got three. That one I've just shown you, the G Master. This, which is the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 lens. Now this kind of replaces the need for the G Master, but I just use that because there's a very specific look that you get with that and obviously it has the f1.4 aperture so in low light situations I can have a little bit extra with that but this lens it's unbelievable the focusing distance on it is absolutely tiny and um, so you can get really really close in to get some amazing details um, of anything you want to get uh, and the aperture f2.8 really does give you such a shallow depth of field um, so yeah I've been really happy with this lens 
it's great value. It's not built like a tank, like the Sony lenses are. It is more plasticky. Um, I haven't had any problems with the zoom at the and you know some people have said that the zoom gets quite loose and if you hold it the camera at the, the inner of the lens sort of droops down um, but I haven't had that problem with either of these lenses that I'm going to talk about um, so the quality is still good the price is fantastic the sharpness is amazing and the focus the autofocus I can't tell the difference between these and Sony native lenses so that might just be me I I haven't noticed any difference or any lag uh, and it's not slowed my workflow down so amazing value lens if you haven't got one if you shoot Sony I definitely recommend getting one but that lens is not my most used lens I have its big brother here the Tamron 28 to 75 uh, now this lens is my most used lens by far um, it's just incredibly versatile you can use it for anything it's fantastic so Again, f2.8 the whole way through, tack sharp. The focusing distance is a little bit further, obviously, with it being, you know, for, and obviously the further you zoom in, the further the focusing distance gets. But you can get everything from landscapes, close up macro ish shots, portraits, uh, and it's great for video as well. Like, I, I've used it for pretty much everything. This lens sits on my video rig, which I will be doing a video about on my main camera uh, for video and it just can get pretty much anything. Um, so this is actually cheaper than the 17 to 28, makes it better value because it's more versatile, just as sharp. The autofocus speed is again, I can't see the difference between this and Sony native glass. Uh, it's just a fantastic lens. So I'd recommend the 17 to 28, but if you haven't got one of these, I'd encourage you to get one of these because they are just, they're just essential pieces of kit. You don't need tons of lenses if you have this. That's why I, I'm so glad that I did what I did last year and swap out all of that unnecessary glass. Um, I do want some of that stuff back, but it's a luxury, it's not a necessity. This thing is a workhorse and it can get any job done. So yeah, get one of these, Tamron 28 to 75 F. 2.8. The next thing that's going to live in my camera bag is this. This is the Peter McKinnon Variable ND. This is the two to five stop. It's still in its little case here. Uh, but yeah, you literally, if I can just get this out, if you twist, it'll lighten and darken your image. Great for video if you're videoing outside, if you're in conditions that are changing, uh, especially with the British weather, you can get it, you know, you can have a day which is really sunny, a load of clouds come over, it rains for 10 minutes, then the sun comes out again. You don't want to be changing lenses, changing apertures all the time, literally twist the front of the lens, adapt to any different exposure that you need within five dynamic range uh, stops. That thing stays in the camera bag, that's an essential item. These are the Sony wireless headphones. I'll put the name down below because I can't remember it. It's something like WHX1000XMX2001X1X, something like that. Um, really confusing name. Still use these for editing. Um, to be fair though, since I've invested in some decent speakers, I use these less and less. But great to have in the camera bag so I can monitor my audio on set or on location. Uh, they're noise cancelling, so it's really helpful when I'm putting on a microphone on someone to find out if it's peaking, what's the quality like, let me just listen back, and then I can do retakes if I need to. I did have a situation where I didn't use them. When I got the footage back, the lady's voice was peaking like crazy. You could hear the motorway in the background. It wasn't good, and there was nothing I could do about it. So they live in the camera bag, so I don't ever forget them. AirPods Pro, they live in there. They're not for monitoring audio, but they are for just my personal use. If I want to put them on the computer and listen to music while I edit photos, that kind of thing, they're gonna live in there. These are great, expensive, but I've got them, so I'll use them. The remote for the Sony a7 III, very useful for starting and stopping recordings. Uh, take that with me at all times, just in case I'm ever gonna need it. This bad boy, now. I don't know why I didn't think about this ages ago. You may have seen my SwitchPod video. Not sure why I did that because if you own a gimbal, a DJI gimbal or any, I think other, other kinds of gimbals, you should have a tripod base. 
All you need to do is attach a ball head to that tripod base and you've got yourself a little miniature freestanding camera stand, a mic stand, a monitor stand. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. You can even use it as a handheld selfie stick. So the switch pod's kind of unnecessary. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. So I just have this attached to the bottom, this plate attached to the bottom of my camera. Slides in there, really simple. You lock it on, you've got yourself a selfie stick. Or you can put it down somewhere. You can video call people, vlog, whatever you need to do. So, so simple. Can't believe I was such a divvy and didn't think of it. So that's living in my camera bag as well. Just goes in there. Next, audio. Now I do have this Rode video mic. Uh, you can't see it, but it's there. Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I use that for most of my YouTube videos. And also, you can't see it. I don't know if I can show you it, but I can. This is just the transmitter, but I use the Rode Wireless Go. The receiver is attached to the camera rig and goes directly into the import, uh, input, sorry, one sec. And that transmitter can be used as a microphone to clip directly onto you. You can put a lavalier mic into it and have that as a little transmitter pack, or you can even plug your boom mic into it so you don't have to have any cables going to your camera. As long as that receiver is plugged into your camera, you can use that as a wireless transmitter or a microphone. Now that is probably one of the best value things that I've ever bought. Um, I had an amazing use for it straight away when I was shooting at um, a horse event, a two day event that I was shooting a film for. Now, I was having to interview riders after they finished their dressage or their cross country um, sections. And obviously they've just come off the horse, they've got to go sort the horse. They don't want to be there for 10 minutes while you're setting up lavalier mics or boom mics or waiting for the conditions to be just right. This transmitter clips straight onto them, onto their collar, really quick. I check the levels with my headphones, that's, come, that's plugged into my camera as well. As soon as the levels are right, just talk, simple as that. Super quick, super easy, and the audio is really good. It takes a little bit of tweaking in post, but so does most audio. So that thing, incredible value. The only other things that I'll be taking with me are these. This is, um, well, it's, this is meant for an aperture light, but I use it to carry spare batteries which uh, you should always have with you if you are shooting video or photo uh, on long days. Uh, some chargers, like little RAV power chargers that I have here just to charge batteries. If it focuses, there we go. And some spare SD cards, always carry these with you. So those live in the camera bag. And that is pretty much it, apart from this lavalier mic that goes with the Rode. Uh, that is everything that is living in my camera bag at the moment. I didn't want this year to be another year of carrying tons of stuff around, but while I'm traveling backwards and forwards from the office to home, not really knowing which day I'm gonna work where, that will always live in my camera bag. And that is officially what is in my camera bag for 2021. I'd love to hear down in the comments if you use any of this equipment, what you think about it, or what you use that's different. Let me know down below in the comments uh, and I'll do my very best to respond to any comments that I get. If you have enjoyed the video, please smash a thumbs up. It really, really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell so you can see every time I upload. I'll be back next week. Take care of yourselves. Have a great week. Uh, I'll see you soon. Peace.